Hello, everyone, and welcome to What's New in AutoCAD 2025. My name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at MicroCAD. And today's presenter is Tim Corey, our applications specialist. Um, at today's webinar, we'll explore the latest features and upgrades in Autodesk 2025, especially AutoCAD and a little bit of Civil 3D, but we'll have a webinar only for Civil 3D as well. Um, as usual, throughout the webinar, you can ask a question on the left-hand corner. Um, you can ask Tim to revisit a step or ask any questions. This is your time, and we want you to make the most of it. And in the upper left-hand corner, you will find links to our social media website and YouTube channel. We post all of our webinars there at the end, so you can share with colleagues or watch it on your own time. And without further ado, I'll pass it on to Tim. Hi, Tim. Good morning, Huli. Thank you. And everybody, good morning. Thanks for attending. I'm going to share my screen so you can see what's going on. So you can see here, I have uh, Civil 3D 2025 open, and in that I can show you AutoCAD new features. Um, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about what's new with Civil 3D, but like Huli said, uh, a little bit later in the summer in July, we're gonna do a webinar specifically for the Civil 3D new features. I also have a little, uh, PowerPoint, okay, <clears throat> and I'll go through this and show you things on AutoCAD as well. <clears throat> so AutoCAD has been sped up quite a bit, and we'll talk uh, specifically about multitasking and multi-threading, which AutoCAD now takes direct advantage of in these, you know, multi-processor uh, PCs that we have nowadays. But I first want to show you about smart blocks because this kind of takes me back to times when I was given drawings where someone has gone through and thought they were making symbols for me. But what I have in reality is a bunch of lines. Say these come from a land surveyor and these are supposed to be survey points but they're actual, actually just line objects. Well, the smart blocks B convert command, I can pick the objects to convert. It'll find all instances of the same geometry with the same line lengths and same relationship to each other and all that, as long as it all matches, it can then make a block of every one of those um, combinations of lines. Okay, and I'll tell it make a new block and I'll call it uh, point, for example. Base point, use geometry center. This is handy that way. In the case of what you're seeing on the screen there, it's gonna be where those lines intersect. If there is a, you know, a circle with a symbol in it, it would end up being the center of the circle, et cetera. Okay, and I just say convert. And now I have, instead of a bunch of lines, I have a bunch of blocks. See that one, elevation zero. What I'm doing is I'm looking on the bottom of my screen down here where the drawing coordinates are listed. And I can hover and AutoCAD will snap into that grip and it shows me that's at zero. But what I want to show you is the elevations of those lines were preserved and added into the block. So you see how this one is at an elevation of three. And these are deals I just manually put the lines at those elevations so I could show you how it converts them to the same elevation. I'm going to start a new drawing and kind of show you how that works. Say I have a circle. 
and I'll give that a radius of one. And then there's some line work in it. And then not thinking ahead, I copy the circle and the two lines around my drawing everywhere it needs to go. And now I have a mess. But B convert to the rescue, pick, look at that, it's going to convert all. What do I want to do? I want to make a new block and call it uh, circular. Use geometry center, which means that'll end up being the center of that circle as my base point, and I do a convert, and now I have all these blocks, which makes it now very easy to scale all these in place. Where if that was lines and circles and I applied a scale of 10, they would all scale from some base point. So I would either have to write a lisp routine or uh, do some manual work to get those to scale correctly. Okay. So that is smart blocks. Let me look at my... Okay, let's talk about speed in AutoCAD, and I've got a little chart here. Um, this really came in in AutoCAD 2024, but this is a big deal, uh, especially for those of you that have not moved up since 23, 2, 1, et cetera, right? <clears throat> for years, we've had computers with multi-core processors which allows for software to do multi-threading as well as multi-processing. Well, AutoCAD took some advantage of that, but they didn't take full advantage of that until now. Okay, So multi-threading is used for AutoCAD internal processes like generating hatch pattern, it, patterns is an example, where multi-processing is used in file operations. So if I'm doing a publish and I say publish in the background, I want to keep working in AutoCAD, all that's going to happen more smoothly and faster. Uh, this is my uh, little thing I did on smart blocks. I already showed you that. Okay, here's a chart that sort of talks about uh, different parts of, you know, what is used by multi-threading and what's used by multi-processing, okay? ASM, whatever that is, you can look through here. Um, this can be a big deal for you. Threaded XREF regen. So if you guys are using external references, um, you want them to be faster regenerated, these new versions do that. They talk about whips. They talk about the, talk about this whip thread. That's old terminology. Whip. They still use it. Um, doesn't really mean much to people other than your 2D graphics are much faster. You see here multi-threading, faster hatch pattern generation. So if you have very complex drawings, uh, drawings where maybe you have a uh, property boundaries with thousands of edges and you're trying to do a, a hatch in there, that's going to be faster. Whoop. And this thing I can scroll over. There's some... I'm not real good with zooming around. I zoom in AutoCAD much better than I do in PowerPoint, my friends. Okay, here's some graphic system. Okay, they've gone to DirectX version 12. Okay. So things are faster. That's enough of that.
Uh, there's also now the AutoCAD Assistant. Assistant Open. This is an artificial intelligence uh, question answering system that's built into AutoCAD. Okay, I'll do one of their suggestions. AI curated, and they come up with a bunch of different articles. Want to talk to an agent? I'm not going to do that live. Okay, so we'll just close that. Okay. Uh, in the area of speed, we have new f new features in Civil 3D, okay? This first one, a level of detail functionality. What you can do now, and hopefully you guys are familiar with the level of detail setting in Civil 3D if you're a Civil 3D user, okay? What you can do is you can now set level of detail on individual surfaces. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with that functionality, that's a Civil 3D function uh, that they've had for years called level of detail. But when you turned it on, it applied to every surface in the drawing. Okay, so you'd, you'd do level of detail and it would apply to the original ground and the finished ground, et cetera. Okay, but now I can go to a surface an individual surface like existing site and set surface level of detail. So now as I zoom out, I see fewer contours, zoom in, I see more contours. That's what level of detail does. And that's a way of speeding up the display of surfaces in Civil 3D. And you'll see that over here, it puts a little blue mark on that surface showing that level, surface level of detail is turned on for that surface. I turn that off, and then it goes back to showing every contour. You can also, if you go here to the surfaces level, you can right click and say reduced level of detail. That turns it on for every surface, or high level of detail turns it off for every surface. Uh, this I don't really have a demo for, but Autodesk has made uh, great strides in speeding up the uh, generation of contour lines uh, for use in, in Civil 3D. For those of you that have used very large surface models, DEM models, uh, models that maybe you download from the National Map Viewer, etc., well, we've all sat there and and waited while Civil 3D says generating contours. And it, you know, it can take a long time. Well, that has been sped up. I don't know what ad adjective I should use greatly. I don't want to say incrementally, linearly. I don't know. It's been sped up. Okay. And then corridors as well. Your dialog boxes are going to turn on faster. You're going to get into setting targets faster. You're going to regenerate or rebuild your corridors faster, et cetera, okay? And your corridor surfaces will now build quite a bit faster. And you use this AEC fast corridor surface build system variable, turn that on, and then it'll apply uh, sped up corridor surface creation. This one I can show you, Esri Maps. Uh, most of you are familiar with AutoCAD having uh, mapping backgrounds available, right? From Bing Maps, that's the Microsoft uh, online mapping. And they look okay, they're cool. But now we have an additional choice. It hasn't been replaced, it's been added to where now you can use Esri Maps. 
So I'm going to try Esri Open Street Map. And there it lays that as a background to my image. Or to my drawing, excuse me. That is the image. Here's an actual aerial photo. And if you wanted to compare that with Bing, you could go to Bing Aerial and decide which you like and then use that, right? Here's a street map. So to me, this is a nice addition. It doesn't replace anything. It gives you another choice. These are the commands here that control that level of detail setting. Okay. And we also have a new feature for those of you doing uh, any roadway type design. We have corridor transitions which have been added that makes it much easier to uh, change design parameters over distance. Uh, the example I usually like to use is, let's say you're doing uh, subdivision design and you need to lower your curb where there's driveways, right? So you're coming along with standard six, six inch curbs, then you want to reduce that down to one inch curbs for a driveway and then back up to six and then go on to the next one. Well, the corridor transitions let you set that up as like a, a transition set and then you can apply that anywhere along an alignment whatever stationing that you want and it'll adjust uh, your curb heights automatically then okay you could you could do it with uh, your slopes your catch slopes maybe you have to uh, I don't know go steeper to get around a tree that you don't want to have removed you could use the corridor transitions would make that very easy and quick to do. Okay. And you can uh, connect directly to your subassembly files now. Used to be you had to import your PKT, your custom subassemblies. You had to import those onto a tool palette. Well, now you can link directly to it and in your prospector under subassemblies, those connected subassemblies will be listed. So then if you go out and make a change in the subassembly composer and save it, you get told in the drawing, hey, that's been changed. Do you want to update? Yes, I do. And you get those changes. Okay. Well, that's about what I had to say. Um, speed and smart blocks are the big deals on AutoCAD 2025, my opinion. Um, Thank you, Tim, for that wonderful bet. presentation. Um, I want to remind everyone about our upcoming webinars. Uh, give me one second while I share my screen. Okay, so we have tomorrow, actually, at 1 p.m. Eastern Dane Time, Sync, Share, Succeed, Navigating Bluebeam Studio. Um, then on June 19th, we have the end of this Bluebeam series, um, Bluebeam's Power Cloud Control. And we'll have on June 20, also with Tim, Digital Drops, Sustainable Water Solutions with Input Drainage. And then on June 26, we'll have What's New in Inventor 2025. Um, so yeah, I just want to also remind you all that if you want to learn any of these topics in detail, you can take a custom training with team or someone else on our team. And we also offer group classes online. 
um, I believe you have in the in the right hand the webinar registrations. You can go there, register, and even if you're not sure if you can make it, um, we recommend you do register so you can get the on-demand recording. And <clears throat> if we don't have any questions, then I would like to thank everyone for attending and thank you, Tim. My pleasure. Goodbye. Thanks, Huli. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.